Hello learners, welcome back to the course in Labor Welfare and Industrial Relations. We move to the last lecture of the module 5, where we will try to conclude the Labor Welfare critically. We will look into the role of Labor Welfare Officer, we will look into the problems in implementation or enforcement of uh, certain welfare amenities. We started uh, with uh, those uh, critical issues in the previous lecture, we will continue that and we will certainly look into the need for an integrated social security. I am Dr. Abraham Sir I am an assistant professor at the School of Business, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. Let us look into role of welfare officer in greater detail. When you look into the welfare officer, there are certain important roles this, this particular welfare officer would be actually dealing with. The first one being executing policies regarding working conditions, welfare, etc. So, when you are trying to understand the, the working condition, you are also liaisoning or you are also uh, making yourself as a via media between the employer and employee. So, this, this happens as a consequence maintaining a liaison between management and labor and promoting harmonious relation between them. There is yet another important role which is bringing grievances of workers to the notice of the management. Now, who will do this part? This would be one of the most thankless job as if you ask me then this is given to the welfare officer. So, welfare officer essentially should act as I have already mentioned, he should act as a via media between the management and the worker. So, he should or she should essentially bring the grievances of the workers to the notice of management. He or she should also interpret labor laws. So, there should be proper understanding and knowledge of labor laws to workers and advising management on the various statutory obligation. And finally, Labor welfare officer promotes harmonious relations between management and workers to ensure efficiency in production. So, it is not only the perspective of uh, the labor, it is also the perspective of the management which is being considered by the welfare officer. So, welfare officer acts as a wire media and I certainly tell this with great assertiveness that if he or she is taking sides, then there will be a, a lack of balance and it will certainly affect the efficiency in production, which is detrimental finally to both the stakeholders, both management as well as the labor workforce. When you look into the role of welfare officer again, there are certain, uh, you know, uh, welfare activities and the welfare officer critically looks into the formation of these welfare activities. It could be something like the recreational facilities, sanitation, education of children, etc. So, all these welfare activities, a welfare officer happens to be the nodal officer. He or she also helps in formulating employment and recruitment policies. Uh, specifically in consultation with the management and workers and their representatives and also negotiating settlement by conciliation in the event of dispute between workers and management specifically and you look into the administrative action. The, uh, the welfare officer ensures all administrative action on part of the management in case of labor trouble. So, please note he is not a person only of labor workforce. He is also a person of management. This is the point I wanted to underscore from the beginning. So, ultimately the role of welfare officer is in assisting employees and I will say the employers in their personal problems and uh, you know make the functioning of the production unit or the plant smooth and efficient. When you look into the problems concerning enforcement of welfare amenities, we have started a uh, discussing this in the previous lecture, if you have seen, if you have gone through the lecture, you will understand. I would like to bring in a different angle altogether. There are certain issues of bureaucratic inefficiencies and this is with respect to the complex procedures. Many a time what happens is that there are lengthy and complicated administrative processes that can typically delay or prevent the delivery of welfare services. And there are issues of poor coordination also among different government agencies which can ultimately lead to fragmented and inefficient service deliveries. That said, it is not only bureaucratic inefficiencies, there are issues associated with inadequate resources also. 
lack of resources or inadequate resources also is cri is critical especially the funding constraints when you are looking in into insufficient funding that can certainly limit the availability and the quality of welfare services and not to mention one of the most important asset or most important resource which is a human resource a lack of adequately trained personnel it is not only personal it is trained human resource trained personnel can hinder the effective uh, implementation of a welfare programs i repeat a lack of adequately trained personnel can hinder the effective implementation of welfare schemes and welfare programs when you look into uh, you know other important dimensions of problems in the enforcement of welfare amenities i've mentioned about the corruption and league i'll also mention about the corruption and mismanagement certainly you know the points that would come under this main agenda would be embezzlement and fraud when you look into funds meant for welfare schemes being misappropriated or embezzled by officials it is a case of corruption and mismanagement so is nepotism and favoritism benefits may be distributed based on personal connections rather than need so this is critically a big issue especially you know uh, most of the welfare amenities are certainly ingrained with such troubles of corruption and mismanagement uh, from nepotism and favoritism and then there are also dimensions of lack of awareness and access which i have categorically explained in my previous lecture this essentially comes from the information gap beneficiaries may not be aware of the available services or how to access them there may be also problems associated with the geographical barriers you know india is a diverse country but there are also critical geographic geographical barriers or geographical constraints especially remote or underserved areas are there which may have limited access to welfare amenities due to the logistical challenges so this is also emerging as one of the critical problem in the enforcement of welfare amenities when you look into other issues like political interference you have the policy instability policy instability is nothing but the frequent changes in policies and priorities which can disrupt the ongoing welfare programs whereas politicization is different from policy instability politicization is more of welfare services that may be used as a political tool so this is where the political interference becomes critical maybe for the vote bank politics maybe as a political tool leading to biased or uneven distribution creates a big problem in the enforcement of welfare amenities please take note of that then there are also dimensions of cultural and social barriers i have already mentioned about the stigma you know somebody using this scheme they might be stigmatized there might be social stigma and discrimination associated with this based on gender based on caste ethnicity or disability can prevent certain groups from accessing the welfare services you we have talked extensively in one of our nptel courses or itself like uh, diversity we have talked about ableism in organizational behavior course which which brings in stigma and discrimination so when when you extrapolate this to the welfare amenity scheme we'll understand how culture and social barriers certainly ends up as a stigma and discrimination there are also situations and circumstances of cultural resistance some communities may resist certain welfare interventions due to their cultural beliefs or practices they might be more traditional they might be more uh, you know uh, ingrained with the cultural practices so that they cannot stay away from that so any level of uh, you know uh, separation would actually hurt their culture sentiment and there will be certainly cultural resistance associated with that when you're looking into an another dimension we have to uh, acknowledge and appreciate monitoring and accountability issues there being there we have to understand that there are lack of transparency issues poor transparency in the implementation of welfare programs can actually obscure misuse and inefficiencies there might be also inadequate oversight you know weak monitoring and evaluation mechanisms can result in poor accountability and certainly continuous inefficiencies finally when you look into the economic factors very quickly you will see that economic instability economic downturns can be there it can strain government budgets it can strain outlays it can strain financial budgeting leading to cuts in welfare spending so economic instability can also be a reason or a problem in the enforcement of welfare amenities and finally inflation 
rising costs that can definitely erode the value of welfare benefits, making them less effective. That's why periodic revision of at least the amount, at least the, the, the amount or the compensation given as part of any or uh, every single single program is critical when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, addressing the challenges of inflation. So, let's note one thing, addressing these challenges require a multifaceted approach. There is no denying the fact it will include policy reform, It should include capacity building, it should include better resource allocation, it should enhance the transparency, and finally, there should be increased accountability and awareness. So, these are some of the significant factors which have to be taken care if you are thinking of addressing or mitigating in the enforce or the problems in the enforcement of welfare amenities and welfare programs specifically. Now, we have to understand that we started with different schemes. There are different schemes spread across uh, different sectors spread across different uh, dimensions within the sectors. There are different schemes uh, targeting different set of people um, uh, in terms of the, the, the usability, there are differences in terms of utilization, there are differences. So, there is a typical need for an integrated social security scheme. So, we have different schemes scattered in different places, different sectors, targeting different population, everything is there. But we need a comprehensive cover, we need an integrated social security scheme and that is typically uh, the end of this module where we try to emphasize on this theme. We need a comprehensive coverage, we need a, a situation where there is unified access where there is inclusivity. Let's look into that with greater detail. When you look into a comprehensive coverage, we have to understand that uh, an integrated system ensures that all individuals have access to various social security benefits. So, uni unified access is critical. Then it includes all the schemes should include various groups, vulnerable groups who might otherwise fall through the cracks of this fragmented system. So, unified access, inclusivity is relevant when you talk about the comprehensive coverage. When you talk about efficiency, there should be a reduced redundancy. You know, you have to streamline different programs into a single system, reducing the administrative cost and the redundancy. So, this would be another important segment or factor or element in increasing the efficiency. And there should be an approach to facilitate uh, or make it easier for beneficiaries to understand and navigate the system leading to better utilization process. So, Simplified process would be a one-shot solution for bringing out a certain efficiency to the system. When we look into equity, equity happens to be one of the biggest concern and for that we need to have integrated system and the dimension capable for that would be fair distribution. It ensures, fair distribution ensures a more equitable distribution of resources targeting those who are most in need. So, rather than looking into uh, the people who, who are otherwise not requiring something, equity, equity like this would be more critical. A fair distribution would be more critical. When you look into the consistency, there should be a standardized benefits or, or you know, movement of standardized benefits and services, reducing disparities between different programs and regions. So, consistency also caters to the equity. Another critical aspect that would, uh, you know, uh, emphasize on the need for integrated social security scheme would be enhanced data management. If we have a centralized system which allows for bit better data collection, management and analysis, a unified database, that would be definitely a welcome change. And also, there should be some fraud prevention. There should be fraud prevention which is easier to detect and prevent those fraudulent activities and abuse through cross 
referencing data. So something like that would actually prevent the fraudulent interventions or the fraudulent practices. And finally, when you look into economic stability, provides poverty alleviation is one of the most important significant aspect. It provides a reliable safety net, reducing poverty and promoting social stability. Why we are doing all this? Why we need a social security? Why we have to integrate the social security? If poverty alleviation is not one of the significant factor, then we are not doing justice to the cause of social security. I will go to that extent and tell that. Economic growth is critical. Economic growth is critical, so is poverty elevation. When you are looking into ensuring a basic level of economic security, individuals can contribute more effectively to the economy. So that is the relevance of economic growth, there is no doubt about it. But if the social security scheme cannot provide a reliable safety net, cannot ensure reduced poverty or mitigate poverty and promote social stability, then there is no use, absolutely no use of social security. When you when you look into improved policy making, comprehensive data from an integrated system aids in more informed and effective policy making. So informed decisions have to be made and this will come from comprehensive data from integrated system. And finally, we need to have a responsive, more adaptive uh, change mentality towards changing economic and social conditions. And we have to also look into the coordination and collaboration Specifically, when we have a lot of schemes running, there should be interagency collaboration. It categorically promotes, it categorically promotes coordination between different government agencies and department. And not to forget, we have to fight on or we have to act on a holistic approach which will address social issues holistically rather than through isolated programs. So please note an integrated social security system can significantly improve the delivery of social protection, ensuring that all individuals have access to the support they need when they need it. So we have tried to cover in this module the detailed uh, social welfare measures what our country is having. We have understood the need, we have discovered the evolution, we have traced the timeline, we have looked into different schemes almost all the schemes we have looked into. We have looked into the issues concerning the scheme, we have looked into the bottlenecks, we have looked into the suggestions or recommendations. But please note, all these welfare measures are for two significant factors. One is uplifting the morale of the worker. And second and the most important thing is poverty alleviation. And in fact, the first is the consequence of the second. So if you cannot attack or target the second cause, which is the most important cause, if these schemes are not hitting the target, is not able to alleviate poverty, is not able to control poverty, then there is absolutely a redundancy that is coming in and all these schemes, the, the entire, the intention of creating these schemes becomes a failure. So this is where we have to think on what are the lacunae, what are the bottlenecks, how we can actually come up or you know reduce the barriers and make these schemes more efficient without, without compromising on the efficiency of the production unit, efficiency of the top line and efficiency of the bottom line. On that note, I'll end this module. We'll see with greater details in an upcoming module. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.